Hello everyone and thank you for coming back. We're going to do another segment of telling you about Portia Williams and her book that she wrote. That to me ain't nothing but a bunch of lies. Okay, she get us all. She get us all. She gets some of us. Okay, she tells a, <coughs> she tells a good story to say what's going on in her book. And this is all about her life. It's real. Nothing's faked or anything like that. Uh, it's not fiction. It's faction. Um, factor or whatever factual behind it, she is doing a very big disservice. I'm telling you, now, I know <coughs> about the whole uh, R. Kelly situation, and one thing I can say is very relevant. And I don't even know, he may have met his wife Treya at a younger age, but I'm pretty sure they were at the legal age. And we do have that conspiracy theory about him and Aaliyah. And her definitely being in high school. And definitely having, I think, a baby by him. And then they had to have an abortion or something. <coughs> Maybe I'm thinking about somebody else. But I know they had legally got married. Lied about it. And her parents got that annulled or whatnot. But this little husband right here. She trying to play like she don't know shit. She's naive. She's gullible. But she's far ahead of the game because her daddy was a rolling stone i say papa was a rolling stone mm -hmm. wherever he laid his heart was his home but when he died well anyway y'all know the whole deal and that's what and hell if andy Cohen went bisexual portia would sex him i really do believe i really do believe or even if he was a straight man portia would have been in his drawers just to advance her career a little further because that's what she does I'm seeing her. I saw her just on the show. I saw her on her spinoff. And I'm not liking what I'm seeing. Because what she portrayed at the beginning is not what we're ending up with. And she's too old at this point to try to do a reversal. She can clean up her act and fly straight and go right on into adult really hood. Because like I said, she's coming too close to the season situation. When you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, you should know better. Because if you don't know better by 40, you ain't going to know better. This is the path you want to choose, you have chosen, and continue to go forward. And see just where it all ends. That's all that I can say about Portia right now. Because at, at the time, it's kind of redundant to keep blaming her parents. But since her parent is still in her life, still have breath in her body, she should be telling Portia what you're doing as a career choice is too detrimental. And you're not going to have the capacity to continue to sustain this go baby girl everything starts to go south at a, a certain part of time and you can't keep constantly getting surgeries baby because as we do know and she admitted in her book <coughs> that she was flat chested she didn't have no tits she didn't have no ass this is what it is and everything now it's like bam 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 you know and it, it's just a you know for who want to do it do it you know i ain't got no uh, calls of trying to tell somebody how to revamp their body because you're gonna have to deal with the upside as well as the downside so anyway she's using those things that she definitely have done to herself as true assets but at the time I don't know if she did all that when she was calling herself messing around with um, Mr. Uh, Piper over here and from I'm telling you the honest truth I read it I reread some parts just to see if I was going to come up with the same conclusion I did. Portia, you did wrong. You are a dirty dog for trying to put yourself in your situation and what you went through with this married man at the time. Because I know he was probably married. But Drell wasn't trying to care in anything about it. She, he probably had put her through the ringer. And she just wanted to be left alone. And she wanted to raise her. I think they had two kids together. And, and that was it. She already saw the writing on the wall. This man going to be a hoe from the time he knew about women and sex and whatnot. And he liked it on young. And, you know, she just got sick of I started trying to make a life for herself without him. But, you know, I'm pretty sure she was going back and forth because that was her husband at one time. And, you know, we always try to, both men and women, try to get the best that we can. And sometimes it's just a loss. Sometimes you can repair it and move on. And sometimes it's just like it is what it is. Okay? Open relationship is what I'm referring to. But anyway, <sighs> you used your book in a sense, putting his name on it 
in a sense of you're going to tell a story about you and his inner in encounters sexual encounters and you're going to make like he did something to you Portia Portia from what I'm reading from what you put in your book logically and reasonably speaking you were a prostitute for him you were a hoe you know you were a madam of the night he didn't do anything to you that you did not allow him to do you could come and go as you please even when you were up at the last part of a one time that you had had enough or whatnot you weren't gonna deal with him no more you found the courage to call security tell them if they don't let you out him or put you on another flight this that and the third you would call the police and they quick fast in a hurry got you on out of their house and you were back in atlanta okay no tea no shade so what you were doing was acting as an opportunist doing what you thought you needed to do not that he required you to do anything that you did but you did it on your own and you tried to play gullible naive victim again and try to put something on a man to, that in my eyes was innocent you um you really kind of def define his character i mean he had too much left anyway because like i said he just had this obsession with dealing with younger girls in high school or probably younger i don't know because i'm not going to take that away from the other girls who were much younger they were in their teenage years in high school and they were being controlled by him and some of them were like almost maybe one year uh out i mean or maybe they might have been 18 years old and they pretty much you know just believed everything that he said to them mentally because they weren't mentally ready to deal with adult life things and how people can manipulate you and get you to do certain things when you really don't want to do them but you don't have enough of life experiences to tell you otherwise and then if you're in fights with your parents that's the last people you want to listen to even though, even though that's the first people you should we want to listen to that are good parents that are there to tell you don't use your body don't sell your body trying to um get with an artist who thinks he's going to put you on the right path of your musical career you know and then you had the parents through that whole scene with the uh five piper trial and stuff you know these parents were dropping their kids off to him to mentor to put them in that limelight you know these girls were young they were um very pretty women yeah i mean girls rather and um they had nice figures uh but most time we are we're very voluptuous we rarely filled out you know to a certain degree uh in high school that we shouldn't have lady figures but all the hormones we be eating and they putting in these foods you know it just is what it is you because i even like was flawed or, or floored when i saw some kids when my daughter was in high school I'm like damn they they do it like they you know oh uh, out of high school like they should be like their last part of college you know going into their young young adulthood you know doing a darn thing because you know they wear makeup they wear very salacious clothes to school um they wear heels to school which i don't know how they spend eight hours in here because we as adults in our late 20s and 30s we, we can't keep heels on like that and these stiletto heels that they be wearing eight inches or more girl please Mm -mm. they can only look on my feet i can be sitting at the table and y'all can be let them be beautified that way but to get up and try to walk you know even a few inches from the table i probably was sitting at mm -mm, i be don't fail honey be don't fail and that's what i'm talking when i was skinny okay <laughs> i wouldn't even try i'm in my uh state of i'm in now with my overweightness child please uh love me too much but don't love me enough to get off this way i tell you but it's the medication too y'all I, I don't just be eating like a hog or whatnot but that's just my sidebar y'all know i go to it but let's get on into this uh video <coughs> i tell you it's kind of confusing with portia going back and forth from 16 to in her early 20s and you know you just don't know if she's starting the sh uh, p uh if she's starting the um the tale of the story at what she's looking at in her early 20s or is she talking to it from a 16 year old perspective I, you know it just so her book is very re weird and how she puts things because this page that she's talking about r kelly seems like it should have been before the other page that i was going to try to uh read out to y'all to give y'all a synopsis <coughs> or whatever thing or summary but basically she is just really you know she's hungry she's thirsty she's uh, uh um what do you call it 
she really is a video vixen hoe um that she was trying to tell the, tell us about in the uh, third chapter three in the third chapter or chapter three she was trying to talk about these girls at this video shoot and they were doing in and everything to get the artist's attention to have more time with them on set or have more time with them off set or <coughs> just more time in the video being shown and they were trying to you know play up to them and this that and the third because they had creative the artist had creative control to who they wanted in their video and how long they wanted them to be shown in the video so you know when you're hungry you're thirsty for that limelight or that in the mu music industry you think you can get a chance to la 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 to them or sing to them to get your career popping and jumping that's the only avenue that you saw you could do it in is by you know being one of their video girls and then it takes it from that section to something even deeper down the rabbit hole but if you're willing to participate they're willing to go through it you know you giving them cars money apartments or whatever yeah they'll float with you and that's the same scenario Portia saw herself in, but she saw herself a little bit more upper class than them, which she wasn't. She, in her mind, she felt she was, but she wasn't. And she really needs to seek help professionally, and I say that with all love and respect, to understand what she's doing in case uh, her baby girl wants to watch her grow up like she watched her mom, and then we're watching another whole scenario through her daughter. But it just is what it is. But Portia goes on to say she um, met with this guy in some club that her and her girls were at in Las Vegas. And, and she knew the guy was slimy, slippery, and not no, up to no good. But she just threw caution to the wind. He uh, came out to their table that they were having. And uh, Portia just knew he was no good. And somehow he managed to talk more to Portia. Portia had, you know, you know, was giving him the time of the day, and then for some reason he mentioned he was one of R. Kelly's boys or whatever. He knew R. Kelly, of course. You know, for some reason, Miss um, Portia wanted to be in the music industry. She felt her mother had told her she could sing. She she was out there trying to sing. Okay, we all know that Flatline uh, EP she did. It was okay, but it was about no real vocals going on. And for the life of me. I don't know when people, you tell people you can sing and then they try to put you on the spot for you to just go and start singing like a songbird just for uh, evidence that you can sing and they do have the resources to put you in the studio with an, uh, a named artist or whatnot or they probably want to do work with you because they love your voice. You know, they may get the uh, opportunity to say, okay, well just sing me a little diddly. Let me see what your range is about. Why do they always go to church songs? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, the devilish music industry. Why do they always go try to sing a prolific, very thought-provoking song? The Eye of the Sparrow. I'm like, girl, what are you... I mean, it really doesn't have a range where you have to really do any high alto stuff. Or, you know, what do you call it? Climbing up the scales with your um, vocal abilities. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, Portia was singing Eye on the Sparrow. And that man went down to sum her up as no artist. He was signing her up to be another hoe for R. Kelly. And at the time, she probably did uh, look young. But like I said, Pied Piper pretty much like the girls that were 14, 15. And when they hit, I guess, 20, he didn't want to have anything to do with them. And it shows proof because Portia talks about that when he asked how old she was at their first meeting. But to go into it, um, just for uh, face sake. She goes out, I guess, because Lenny had went. I guess Lenny was a scouter for women for R. Kelly because he didn't actually have a lot of time to go out and meet people, which he do express that to Portia. But, you know, when you really want to go out, you want to be seen in the spotlight, you are going to be out there, period and point blank. But the type of things that uh, Pied Piper was doing wasn't very kosher because like i said the clientele of women that he liked it they were like 15 up to 19 and that was pretty much it from what i hear in the documentary that was done and just some people that came out that knew him personally they gave a history of him liking young women um and we do know Aaliyah was young she was still in high school when she was working with him as well and trying to forge a relationship uh, but like I said, when you're young, dumb, trying to have fun, 
you try to believe in people and you try to think that most people and majority of people won't do you wrong or do you no harm but in actuality you got to watch out for those wolves and sheep's clothing type of people okay but anyway it goes to say you know she went out there lenny set it up they went she went to the chicago for the first time <coughs> when she landed it was a car and a man waiting for her to uh go take her to see r kelly for this musical adventure she was on trying to work with him and just that and third and it seemed like it was snowing at the time and you know they pull up to a large gated house or mansion as she says and um it seems like the driver is trying to give her a hint of the lord is working through the driver as, as, as his vessel to tell portia you don't want to go here you don't want to do this you know because he basically the driver had told her you know uh it's a lot of women come up here there's a lot of girls that come here my driver said as we neared the house flash flood warning right there all bells and whistles should have been going off and you should have said what you know can you say that again and then you could have you could have told him what you felt that he was saying and if it did come out to be the same thing you should have said well take me to back to the airport call whoever you need to do because i'm about finna uh go off i'm finna call the police i'm finna do some because no nah, we ain't finna start no traffic and shit up in hell you know that's what she could have did and it, she never would have had this incident but of course she was seeking for fame fortune <coughs> and a good life or what she had perceived as a good life in her head and she wanted every little bit of it okay she goes on to say i didn't know if he was trying to make a conversation or warn me of something but i'll soon find out hey you had it at the ladder when you say warn you of something you had it but you did not go at your good feeling you went on you proceeded with caution but you proceeded on your own wasn't nobody forcing you and <coughs> wasn't nobody taking advantage of you you just made some very bad unpopular decisions she goes on to say i thought i was going into a recording studio but instead we pulled to the side of a huge home it goes on to say, I opened the door and the driver helped me grab my bag. She even goes to say what type of bag she would carry, Lord. And I'm like, okay, this must be a little baton. But when I read it, she said the Calvin, the black Calvin count, and the black Calvin Klein luggage. I'm like, now we back in the 80s. Was that a big deal? Because I didn't travel a lot. Uh, not where I needed to, not where I was traveling on an airplane. Most of my uh, travels at the young age in the 18s and 20s. I drove <laughs> excuse me well being driven so I didn't even know anything about no flight but I'm like okay Calvin Klein luggage was out hot like that okay girl because she made it a point so it must have been something special and hot at the time of a wardrobe or a name brand that was being dropped at the time so I guess you had to have your Calvin Klein luggage or you wasn't doing nothing she goes on to say she walks into the building or it it was really i guess one of r kelly's homes he had a built-in studio or whatnot but he really wasn't using that as a studio as we partake more into the reading of uh, her book of what she was explaining it was but she said it was kind of set up like a, a security type center checkpoint where uh you checked in with the security guard and they validate who you are this that and the third and then i guess he correlated schedules of what women he wanted in certain rooms when he was going to go see them or whatnot <coughs> and so um they pretty much you know was holding her until her friend lenny the guy she had met, met in las vegas um that wanted to set her up for her singing abilities and this that and the third because she saw him from like i said the Isle of sparrow he was like mm hmm because she said her mama said if anybody asks you to sing on spot you better be ready and be ready to do it okay so, so she she thought that in her head when she was trying to figure out what song she wanted to sing sing for lenny and um that pretty much what got her the spotlight of i guess coming to chicago to meet uh mr pie piper himself but like i said he was just there to gather more women for r kelly from what it seems like <coughs> but then lenny finally appeared and invited her to come downstairs and stuff like that and this that and the third and you know then she, portia goes in to say she, you know that she tells us how she met lenny because she was out there chilling with her friends in Las Vegas and they were drinking, minding their own business, doing what they wanted to do. And then she says, uh, he slithered over to us trying to make introductions. But like that, so you knew he was slithering, then you know he was a snake, so you shouldn't have been having no time with him. No conversation, 
like hey how you doing gotta go but she got into conversation with him and he started asking questions of Portia uh, he was asking her what do you do you look like you're on TV and said clearly trying to gas up or gas her up she said no I'm not then he goes in to say well are you an artist he pressed and then she says she can sing and at this time I honestly didn't know if I could sing or not this is what she's saying but my mama said I could sing so I thought I could sing she always encouraged me to use my gifts so when Lenny asked me if I was an artist uh, <coughs> postering like he could help me uh, make it in the industry I jumped at the opportunity I was a singer that day okay so I'm saying you see a line you're lying all over the place I guess they want to make you uh, a realtor you could go out there and say you, you know how to sell houses and don't even know the first pitch so it, it, this mind bothers me how you just come off a lie off lie, lie, lie but then your daddy lied a lot so I guess and see I kind of like that left picture of Portia that younger picture like she's in journal Boston that's what he would like okay and he probably wouldn't have let her go <laughs> All right, but no. When she was talking about twenties, he stopped her right there. He's like, mm -mm. "No, no, no, no. You, you, we're gonna say you're, you know. In my mind, I'm gonna be thinking 15, 16, 17. Don't tell me twenty, okay? Don't even open up your mouth no more to say that. And that was that. But anyway, he goes on the scene for uh, Lenny R. Kelly's friend, and um, she he goes in to say he's looking for a new artist. He's working on some new projects. This, that, and the third. And he probably knew how to scout out uh, women, uh, desperate women, that would probably do in and everything. And Portia was a real looker. And she's still a real looker now. Uh, but she was probably a real, real cute looker back then and young. And he knew the M.O. of the type that Pied Piper liked. So he took it on the um, no advisement and he went and scouted out um, girls for him. Um, then, you know, he told... Um, her she liked it, her voice and this that, and the third and uh he would be getting back with her so um let me see days she goes in and say days after um flying wait a minute oh you got a nice voice all right then she was saying because she was it really in las vegas with her girls kicking it but that after they had did their little girl trip or whatnot she flew back to atlanta uh, some days later and she got a call from Pied Piper's camp saying you know uh, Mr. Kelly wants to see you so um, they flew her back out to Chicago well she did her first time going to Chicago because <coughs> she was in Las Vegas at the time when she met Lenny so he flew her out to Chicago um, she thought she was going to stay in a hotel or whatnot uh or meeting him at a recording studio but of course that did not happen she even said she was naive uh that she didn't realize she wasn't going to a studio or the studio was going to be in his house she had forgot that most big artists do actually have studios built into their home for recording if that's what they want to do prince had it uh even candy boris had her own little small studio uh i think jermaine dupree had his here in atlanta so it's a lot of people that didn't have the time or the money or the effort to want to go lease a building or whatnot. They kind of renovated their home that they were already in to try to create that type of studio vibe. Okay. So, um, let's see here. She goes into uh, one of R. Kelly's homes because we know he had several homes, uh, around the areas uh, I think he had one here if I'm not mistaken but don't fact check me because I'm really not sure but I think he did at one time yeah he sure did because he had one of those girls up there living with him so he did and end up getting trashed or whatever and he ended up selling it but it is what it is okay but she went on to say that um, she met him at uh, Pied Piper's house it had a cabin feel to it although the walls were in egg shell color they were trimmed in cherry wood he walked down uh they walked down a long hallway where two studios set across from one from one another it was my first time walking to a studio but i was acting as i had done it a thousand times okay i had to ask lenny what was up uh you didn't tell me we were going to going to his home or his house studio no that isn't what wasn't a state-of-the-art recording studio but still this is really big deal 
uh, a big detail to leave out. And then he goes on to say, oh, yeah, 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 I meant to tell you, he stammered. He's got a studio here at his home or his house, so this is where he will be recording. You're going to be meeting Robert in a minute. Okay, and it goes on. Minute goes into hours. Hours goes into whatever. Um, and Portia goes on to say she don't understand why she never really asked him about the details and all of this, that, and the third. I'm like, because you wanted the you wanted this life, okay? So when you being quiet, they're feeling that you are accepting everything that's gonna happen to you. Because like I said, ain't nobody force you. Now you didn't say no guns was being held, no gloss on no holsters, nobody was coming for you. So you had the opportunity to say, No, this doesn't look like a kosher scene I wanna be a part of. Call me a tax, I'm leaving so um again we're on the admission that nothing was happening to you that you did not want to happen to you because you never said anything and you were an adult at the time so it's just like are you consensual with what's going to happen are you cool with the situation you know this is things you could have been talking in your head and if you felt threatened in any way you should have got up out of there because nobody wasn't holding you uh, accountable for being there and they weren't holding you hostage to be there so you did this to yourself Portia but you're trying to play it like this man was holding you hostage okay and this is all this is shit playing out in your head okay but then it goes on to say Lenny left me in the studio to gather my thoughts uh, little did I know it would be the last time I saw him ever I sat in a darkened studio alone thinking, oh my God, I'm in R. Kelly's home. At this time, he was a huge star. He had just released Trapped in the Closet. It was only a few years after he had released Happy People, Ignition, You Save Me, and Every Black Person's Cookout Anthem back in the day, Step in the Name of Love. And here I am being personally invited to go meet him. I felt I was special. This was my big break. If I could just pull it this off, I'd be one step from making it. So again... Um, Portia had sold her own self a dream she had built in her mind I guess from talking to other females about how how and what you have to do to get into the industry and once you get to a certain position then you start getting looked at to go in to have studio time to probably get a contract signage and this that and the third and this is what Portia only had in the back of her mind and what she had solidified in her brain that she was working towards that goal and that goal only uh, come what may by any, by any means necessary she is going to use her body and what little talent she had to solidify herself as golden in the music industry then you know like I said after a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot of waiting a lot of time she finally got to meet Mr. Kelly okay so some man had brought her uh, to the studio where he had got himself relaxed in she said he was wearing dark sunglasses and a hat turned backwards sat in the corner of the studio and you know was making light talk then he goes and say hi well she goes and say hi I'm Portia I said brightly walking up to shake his hand oh yeah nice to meet you nice to meet you I heard about you uh, he said a little too fast for Portia. You came with Lenny, right? Right. I've known him for years. Um, Mr. Kelly's expressing. He told me about you. You can sing. He said you got a nice voice. And um, he goes on to tell her he's working on new music. He just thought up a little diddly right now, and he was basically telling his partner to get out the chair. But his partner really wasn't catching on, or maybe he would hire some of hell. Maybe he liked the R. Kelly himself. Who knows? Maybe Kelly went both ways. You know, I, it was said on the streets he did, but it just is what it is, okay? But he wanted his fellow to move out so Portia could sit closer to him, which it don't seem like Buddy really wanted to, but he went on half hesitantly. I mean, half hesitant to do so, but he got up. And Portia said the seat was warm. She thanked him for that, but you know, it was just here and there, okay? Um, uh, Portia was really mesmerized at being having the opportunity to sit face to face with such a uh, very musical genius at the time because we all were enamored by his works, his body of works, and how he came to be so successful with him not knowing how to read, write. What was it for him to read or write? Okay. So everything was just methodically done in his brain and put on paper by somebody else writing it and you know he be, being able to understand the composition of playing the instruments and stuff of that nature okay 
but uh you know his his um uh, what was called an engineer at the time played him a little diddly and um <coughs> he started sing, singing to it or whatnot and you know he just was uh, amazed and Portia was amazed with him she said the music was very head bopping and it kind of controlled her emotions making her seem a little bit less antsy being in a room with him and his engineer and that other man and uh she, she said it was very intoxicating very relaxing very infectious and her it got her in the mood okay but it, she, he didn't tell her to go sit at the piano and, and sing <laughs> he didn't tell her that nothing transpired at like that at all then she said robert started treating her as they had known each other for years he was actually kind of disarming to have him suddenly act like they were friends and i was his homie who stopped by to kick it in the studio while he was creating she said she although she did not feel forced on his end I was pushing to catch up to the moment. Okay, they say after he played his track, he didn't even talk about music again. And she said, What if I did speak up for myself just to be humiliated or worse that if I was kicked out of his house and no place to go and no way to get home to Atlanta? Okay, so she felt in her mind struck uh down where she felt like she couldn't do anything because she didn't have no money. She didn't have no money to get a plane ticket. She had no money to go to a hotel. She was just ass out. And I'm like, Portia, why would you do that to yourself, baby? If you're going out there, he's supposed to have his pl your plane ticket uh, to go back and forth or whatnot. Or maybe he did because in the section, as you play later, uh, you actually went home with the ticket. So I guess he paid for it because that was his payment back from laying up with you. Which, again, you did not have to do it, but you felt like this was your end. You had come this close. You had met the man in, in, in private. And he seemed to be, you know, legit because he's having a studio. He's having an engineer, sound effects, soundboard there. He's playing music. He's singing to you. You know it's him. And you feel like you have a chance to be one of his mentees. But it just was what it was, okay? Um... Then she goes to think about the guy who had actually told her about R. Kelly. You know, he had disappeared. He, she didn't know where he had went to, but it was some hours. Some hours before she would see him again. Um, he, uh, I, I guess he got tired of kicking it with Portia. And he kind of saw that it may, it may be an a issue where he can try to fill her out a little more. But uh, he just told her he'll be back, okay? And she left he left her in the studio again for some hours on end and you know the engineer was there with her but it was a it just was what it was uh she said she sat there for about 45 minutes and then somebody came and told her where she could put her stuff where she's gonna be staying just that in the third um like i said she kind of felt like she needed to be there because she felt like she would miss her time and whatnot but you know she it, she it was on her own accord wasn't nobody forcing her to do anything they even told her she couldn't um you know roam around the house if she felt like she needed to but she just stayed, stayed stuck in that room she said the offer was extended to her but she felt like in some kind of way she shouldn't go out her room she shouldn't lounge around in the house or whatnot she just had to wait and be patient this is what she said in her mind because she said it wasn't forced upon her to stay in her room it was the door wasn't locked uh <coughs> anytime she wanted to make a call of course she had to go through security and they patched her wherever she wanted to you know go or talk to or whatever but at the time you know meeting in that studio he got a chance to kind of sort of feel her out they had talked for maybe an hour or so she didn't feel like she was antsy she felt like she was part of the crew so, you know, uh, Pied Piper's going to let her stay there and see how far he could go with her. Because even the guards were saying, you know, or even Kelly said, you could just stay in the house here or whatever. The guy said, casually, Robert will see you later, okay? So, she made it a point to herself to stay where she was uh, asked to stay. But eventually they came and brought her to a very large master bedroom. She didn't know she was going to be staying in his bedroom. She thought she was going to be staying in the guest room or whatnot. But again, they brought her there. She had to wait. So, um, she didn't quite understand why she was there this and the third. And she had peeped out the door and she saw, um... 
his wife's ex-wife at the time photo hanging in the in the hall and you know she was playing I guess musical cheers in her head trying to figure out was he still married to Drell was he not married to Drell what was going on is she out here messing with a married man she didn't like that look but she wanted to be in the music industry you know just playing all these different scenarios in her head so uh Robert finally came and saw her and he made a plea to her of sorriness and and all this he got caught up with you know dealings with you know uh the music he was trying to create this that or third he went on to say i'm so sorry baby robert said walking the door and talking to me as if we were in a relationship a stark difference from how he treated me earlier in the studio okay he said i wanted us to work later but i got caught up okay and of course when she I guess she had fell asleep because he was waking her up then she said robert immediately started kissing her I'm really into you. I, I think you're beautiful, he said. I'm just looking for somebody that I can spend time with. I need a girlfriend, a girl who's mature and patient and keeps a low profile. I need I need her. Can you be that girl? And I'm like, Portia, if that wasn't the biggest ass line that any guy could have spat to you, famous or not famous, and you fell for that, girl, please. That that number one. Hell, I heard that in high school and was looking at the dude like, you took all that five minutes time to think of that crazy ass corner line. Get out of here, you know, but I was that kind of chick. But anyway, it, it was like, what? And then she goes on and reply, I'm super low key, I replied. I felt myself getting caught up in the fantasy and if I was dreaming, but what about your wife? He said, I'm single, he emphasized, I, and I'm lonely all the time, okay? Uh, he says working it was not only hard for him to meet people but also hard for him to be around people he acted like his gift was just so heavy on him it was like a bird and he had was he was just like chained to the studio uh and, and what he had to do that need that pull it kept him from a lot of relationships in his life robert said and he just needed somebody who would be understanding and what he could give in a relationship and what he could not give in a relationship <clears throat> and so Portia was like head over heels with this man because he was saying all the right words for all the right reasons and she didn't ask enough questions okay but he goes on uh she goes on to say because she really needed to hear it from his mouth she says so y'all not together i pr i press he said no we're not together and she said oh, okay because i saw her picture in the hallway and then he goes on to say we're not together she says just my kids okay it's just me and my kids then he goes on to say, I just like your spirit. It's something about you, he said, promptly hanging, the, changing the subject. I want you to take off your clothes. <laughs> okay, and in portion mine, she said, Lord, I'm already in the house for hours. It's three or four in the morning. I've already put myself in this position. This is what you're supposed to do. You have to. You have to. Okay, there's no turning back. What are you going to do? Say no. And then what? Then you're stranded with nowhere to go. Okay, and then she said, I was so skinny, no more than 145 pounds. My body looked very young. I had no breasts, no heels, but he didn't seem to mind. In fact, it seemed and it turned him on. How old are you, he asked. 20. I replied before he cut me off from finishing saying my age, which was 25. He said he stopped her. He said, let's just say you're very young. Okay, I like damn. See, that's your key right there. Okay, he didn't want you, Portia. He didn't want you, but you looked it so fascinating. You looked it young in his mind, so he just dealt with you for what it was. Okay, and then I guess they had a sex or whatnot, and then she called herself running to the bathroom because he was trying to get himself composed and together. And when she came back out, he had his shirt on and he was ready, uh, <coughs> saying he had to go. Uh, and do some more late night work here. Okay? <laughs> it was crazy. It was just crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. The, the shit that Portia did. And like I said, she kept going back and forth at least four times. In different rooms he would have her in. She was never in the same room. And it's like he was grooming her. Then they suddenly had this like party. Where, uh, cause Porsche got fed up again by every time she had to come out there and meet him and be with him, he always would put her off. He never greeted her. It's always the same men, same security people. 
telling her to go to this room or next time she comes she had to go to that room you know and then she came to this one room that had a lot of mirrors in it and i think of that investigation they did claim that in that particular house uh, it was a room uh, but one particular room that had just mirrors all around it so of course he was doing some freaky ass shit but portia was wi a willing participant again she expressed throughout this whole chapter did nobody hail her did nobody hold her against her will so for her to come up with a fictitious thing saying she was in the same stress and strain that uh, those underage girls was um in when they were telling their story about being caught up with uh the pod piper and him you know using them and telling them you know untruths and stuff and trying to do a manipulation thing on their minds uh so he could stay on their minds and they can be chained to him dependent upon him because the parents you know some of them had gave their children over to him to mentor and not do all these other crazy things that he was allegedly doing to them and it was just like two girls at the very end it was just like real gun ho for him and then one of them turned on him and started you know basically having a brain of her own or coming to jesus moment she was like i ain't finna stay in this situation because how r kelly had pitted them against each other he basically was putting them in the same room to have like a like a fair party or whatnot but they never really actually were with each other i guess he paired them off in certain rooms certain groups and depending on what he wanted to do with whatever woman that particular or girl i should say at that particular day or night he chose them for whatever <coughs> excuse me whatever reason but anyway like i said portia kind of got the whole gist of it because at one time that they, they go into a studio out of the four possible times that she went out there they never had anything but a sexual encounter and um uh, you know uh it was one night he had this big party with all these girls uh because she was really pretty fed up and she she didn't want to do anything but go home and then uh one of the security guards had said you know that he's having a party he wants you to come down are you interested in coming and of course instead of her saying no i'm packing my bed so i'm getting the hell up out of here uh deuces make sure a ride come for me in the next 20 minutes uh she didn't say that she just said yeah 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 i'll go to the party and whatnot and then the party was with these um young ladies and someone was telling her how long they had been in the month some was saying and been in the house uh here with r kelly some of them had said it was a month some of them had said it was a week uh and portia no she had stayed a couple of days in the room herself and didn't see him like that um and uh, you know he finally came in the room all the girls were like so excited to see him you know like they were going to actually start working with him and it was wasn't all just a sexual thing and uh portia had said you know he was greeting every girl in the house uh on his own eventual time and, and when he finally got to her he kissed her and that was one thing that she felt that like maybe he really was her his girlfriend because he didn't kiss any of the other girls <coughs> but i'm like oh poor 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 portia because i thought he said he was coming to get you to go to a party i mean an industry party something to that effect but he said he was having a, a um a party at his house in a certain room with all these girls that were much younger than you so that should have told you something right there ding 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 but anyway portia didn't get her call to justice and a call to jesus moment until one day she heard uh a loud bumping noise some rattling noise people hollering and she felt that it was r keller's voice uh and she felt like the girl that he was with he was beating on her and it was just a uh, too 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 much for her and uh she called for the security to you know have her a flight on next thing smoking if they didn't she was gonna call the police of course they took her serious because they did have some altercation that night with probably one of the girls or whatnot and portia heard it and they knew that they probably needed to go on and get her out the house <coughs> because she was a willing participant to stay there and you know it just is what it was he wasn't finna do that with her in her music career it was gonna be that lackluster because she couldn't sing anyway she was just a thought he knew she was a thought it, and it, he probably was gonna get rid of her anyway because again she wasn't his age group and so they end up winning calling you know the ride for her she got back home 
and after some dust had settled she said um pie piper had called her a couple of times after that incident saying he wanted to see her again and she went on and told him that she didn't want to see him anymore um that she couldn't take it anymore and the police don't call her anymore and so that was done that was all it and she says fast forward 10 years later i sat down with the investigators to tell them my story i never in a million years thought there would be an opportunity for me to tell my truth to officials okay even my own mother didn't know the depths of what had happened in the pied piper's house i had just worked up the nerve to tell her about one of one of about some of it only a few years ago so you're talking about this happened in your 20s a few years ago you're 40 now so you told her when you were around 38 39 Oh, Portia, you just piss poor altogether. Just piss poor, honey. And R. Kelly did not rape you. Okay, you was a willing participant of this, thinking he was going to shine on you and work with you and create an artistry in you as far as the music career. Because you were there for his mentorship, you thought. But you knew in your feeble little mind and not even gullible little mind that you had real talent okay and like i said you don't really need no talent uh in the industry you just got to believe in the industry and they got to believe that you believe in the industry in order for you to do some small things for some change okay and their benefit and um you were impatient and you you did things that you shouldn't have done from the get-go if you knew it was a situation when you first went and saw him and you didn't see you being out of a studio a real real recording studio in a building you should have been up right there and then the guy telling you a lot of young ladies your age he bring to this place because he probably felt like you weren't w one that should have been there in the first place you know it works through different people as a vessel to get to you you know you used your in intellect with uh your discernment when you were trying to sign uh which i didn't really go into that because it's kind of boring she had a situation where she was working with somebody that was trying to take money from her that she had allegedly had gotten from her uh, deceased grandfather. He had left uh, the kids and the family members some money left. Jose Williams, her grandfather, when he passed. Uh, I guess he had saved the pretty pity. And he was trying to take care of everybody, his family, even his young grandchildren. And she called herself investing in some real estate pro property with this gentleman who ended up actually trying to take her for a ride with her money i mean the property was legit but the loans you know at that time were very um high with the interest rates and stuff and he wanted to invest with her in two real estate properties um apartments or condos or something she was buying and he wanted her to buy two but she was saying the lord was telling her to only buy one by one by one by one and uh, kind of find out <coughs> he had got all the closing costs uh benefits the monetary value and something else and he kind of railroaded her in that sense because they were supposed to be business partners but in actuality he was trying to screw portia over but she didn't really go really too much in depth with that so i didn't really want to bring it up or really do anything on that but i just wanted to clarify and get the meat and potatoes of this uh pie pepper situation that it was totally different uh, from what those young ladies said they experienced to what Portia was self-willing to do for herself and for fame Which was totally different and I'm pretty sure the investigators were looking at her like are you serious? What you're telling us now you were a willing participant and you were able to come and go when you please So what the hell are, what are you doing here? For? But you know of course by argument's sake they had to just take her statement And pretty much they were only worried about what she had heard in the house with that particular person but with her not actually being able to put a face with a scream she was like N you know they didn't want to hear that shit but they had to follow up on every lead and every you know thing when they were doing this case on Pied Piper because they really wanted to put him where he is now but personally I, I just really think that you know it was something he didn't want to do or he didn't want to do anymore and the elites just said okay well, we'll, we'll get you honey we'll get you we'll get you where it hurt baby so that's pretty much what they did same thing with bill cosby you know was it right for them to do certain things no 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 i'm not saying that get them on what they really actually did with the people they actually did wrong 
but to just pile up you know more stuff on them like what Porsche's doing is ridiculous you know totally ridiculous and if you read a book you go in chapter four you'll get your own opinion hopefully it'll be just like I told you she set her own self up ain't nobody help her ain't nobody hold her ain't nobody restrain her she did that to her own self and that's just piss poor piss poor but she always talk about her mother was always there for her I mean your mother's gonna love you no matter what no matter what you may tell her you may disgrace her or whatever but your mother is supposed to be your rock you know other than lord jesus christ but your mother's supposed to be your rock on earth your mom and your dad that's why you're supposed to be honoring them because they're supposed to set the tone they're supposed to set the standard and raise you appropriately okay to respect yourself as well as others but uh she couldn't tell her mama so i'm like you couldn't tell your mom that she was turning into a hoe hell your mama probably saw it because she probably would won you know what I'm saying? You, you take one to know one. So instead of her doing the due diligence saying no, you're going to college. You don't did too much stuff out here. I don't watch you. Uh, and I'm, what I'm saying, I don't like. Okay? So you need to get out of this music, especially when you're young still. Uh, if you don't want to do the kind of work that I'm doing or to be the profession I am in, you need to do something. Something more honorable. Something more realistic. Because, you, 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 you know, that's why she messed up at this point in time right now because of these actions she's taking but like i said it is what it is take this video in slow doses uh because it is long and um hopefully y'all enjoy it and y'all gotten some enlightenment but portia just used this whole scenario with the pied piper to sell her books because there's, ne there's nothing in it and sh if she would have put something in it she would probably have some legal legality issues surrounding her okay and when they mm -hmm. even tried to call to clarify certain mm -hmm. things uh, in her book with uh, R. Kelly's camp. They didn't return nothing because they know she had been there. They know she had, was a willing participant and they knew what had transcribed or had, you know, transpired uh, the times that she went up there. So they was their hands were clean with her. Uh, she was a willing participant for sexual actions. Okay? This is what it is. To me, it costs it to be a prostitute, but, you know, I don't know what they're calling it these days. But that's all I had. Thank you for the Jasmine brand for letting me use her picture. She don't know uh, that I used it. But hopefully she won't mind. Because it was a cute picture I wanted to use of Portia. Um, but y'all definitely can go over there to the Jasmine brand. And see what she has to offer. It's been in the business a very long time. You would appreciate. She's a great source to cite. With um, entertainment news and celebrity news. And you know she's been a staple poster child. For the positive uh on the youtube airways so that's all i had guys hopefully i enjoyed this video and i'll be back with chapter five i wonder what she has for me in that uh <laughs> that chapter a mess but y'all be good and i'll see y'all then bye